Okay, this is CHD 216, Art and Music for the Young Child. But what we really want to talk about is creativity and how important creativity is, um, fostering creativity, encouraging creativity, because the sort of muscles that you use to be creative are muscles that you need to do math and to do science and to think about things outside the box. So we will talk about creativity to start our journey in art and music. All right, the concept of creativity. Make me a little bit bigger. There. Okay. Marianne Cole is a, an expert on creativity and art with young children. Any Marianne Cole book is going to be a great asset for you to have in your classroom. Um, so one of the things that Marianne Cole said is that creativity in children, it's as natural and necessary for children as fresh air and sunshine. We need to give children creative experiences so that they have a this is a, a foundation of a lifetime of creative expression, all topped off with a heaping helping of important learning skills. So in this class, we're going to learn about creativity, we're going to learn about art and music, and we're also going to learn how those, um, having those experiences in art and music encourage creativity in young children and are opportunities for them to learn all sorts of different developmental skills. When you're doing art and music, it's not just about art and music. So right here, you can see this photo of these two kids. There's some social emotional development going on there, right? Because they're using the same space, they're working together. There's some large and small motor development going on there. I know this little girl well, there was most definitely some language development going on because she was probably telling him what to do. So doing an art project isn't just about doing an art project. Uh, let's see, what is creativity? Well, what is it? It's a lot of different things and a lot of different people have ideas about what it is. Um, Albert Einstein said creativity is intelligence having fun. Henri Matisse, an artist said, it takes courage. Maya Angelou said, you can't use it up. The more you use, the more you have. And Pablo Picasso said, every child is an artist. So creativity is the process of bringing something new into being. It is creating, right? To make something different, new, something that's unique. And it you need a combination of abilities, skills, motivations, and attitudes. We talk about capital C creativity, something genuinely new, the invention of the light bulb, the invention of um, what's something brand new that's been invented lately. Um, oh, I know, like Tesla, magnetic driven, non gas using battery car, right? Um, small C creativity is things that are new to you, but only to you. So it's when a kid uses um, finger paint colors the first time, that's creativity. When you're doing something on your own and thinking about it in a different way. So the creative process is discovering an idea or plan or answer and then working out a way to do it. So it's discovery and then the process. So the, um, I don't know how to say this person's name, talked about five steps in creativity. Preparation is thinking about, oh, you know what? I, there's a question that I have or there's a problem that I have and I'm thinking about how to, how to solve it or what to do. That's the preparation. What can I do here? Churning ideas is, oh, here's an idea. Here's, here's a way to solve this problem. Would that work, right? Understanding is realized in insight. Oh yes, this might work. And then you do it and then you evaluate it. And then the next step is to elaborate on it, to, to make it bigger, okay? Why do we encourage creativity in young children? Because it boosts self-esteem. Kids 
feel good about themselves when they can come up with new ideas and interesting ways to do things. It promotes divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is, hey, there are different ways to do this thing. There are different ways to solve this problem. There are different ways to use paper and glue. Um, it develops their potential to think and use new skills. Um, it helps their individuality and their joy of being different. And we should always encourage that. It helps them accept change because if you have an idea about how things are going to go and then there's a different creative solution, you have to sort of figure out how to accommodate that, right? And it helps them explore the world around them. So we talked about this convergent thinking and divergent thinking and creativity <laughs> there um, requires both. So convergent thinking is that there's one way to do things, right? And divergent thinking is that there's a variety of ways to do things. And you have to be able to look at it from both ways to really truly be creative. In young children, creativity should focus on the process, not the finished product. That means the joy of doing something, not the, oh, look at this beautiful thing that I made. That means giving kids the stuff to do stuff, but not showing them this is what it should look like when you're done. You can do that, but that is not a creative project. That is a following directions assignment or activity. It's different. And when we're encouraging creativity in children, we want to say, hey, let's all do this thing and see what everybody comes up with. So process versus product is very important for you to remember. The majority of art projects, you are doing creative projects with young children should be process art. Process art is putting the easel out with a bunch of paints and letting kids go crazy. It's putting bins in your art section, or art center that have cut up paper, buttons, and they're making collages. It's painting with unusual materials. It's playing with clay. It's drawing painting to music. It's open-ended and it promotes creativity. So at the easel, you've seen this a million times, preschoolers who paint a beautiful, beautiful picture. It's all different colors. It's, it's gorgeous. And then they keep going and then it turns gray. And then there are holes in the paper because it's not for them about what the final product looks like. It's about the motion of moving as we paint, it's about standing at the easel, it's about seeing what happens when you put too much paint on. That's process art, okay? Collage, same thing. It's not about, oh, I put five pieces together to make a fire truck. When I started out with three-year-olds, I had a project where we were gonna do an art project where we were gonna make fire truck collages. So I cut out four black circles for each kid and one red rectangle for each kid, and then some yellow pieces to make ladders. And by the, and I was doing it with small groups. By the second group, I had run out of black circles to make wheels because people put more than four wheels on a truck, right? If I have all those pieces out there and I say, we're going to make collages, you can put as many on as you want. That makes it a creative art project. If I had said, all right, everyone, we're going to do a following directions project today. I want you to put your red rectangle in the center of your page. Now I want you to put four black circles on it. That is a following directions project and that's valuable, right? But it is not an art project. Um, other things. So we used to just put random bits and pieces of things in our collage area. I had a student, a three-year-old, who we used um, Q-tips to put glue on paper, right? Or to put some paint on or whatever. And this girl was, her art was not complete until she glued at least a half a dozen Q-tips to the paper. That was part of what she wanted her art to be like. That was not the intention of putting the Q-tips in the art area, but that's what she did. So painting with unusual materials, you know, 
roller painting or painting with fly swatters or painting with squirt bottles. Those are all things that make it more about the process and less about the product, okay? Things that are product art are coloring pages. There's a very specific thing that you're supposed to do there, right? Coloring pages are okay. If you think of them as a small motor activity, if you think of them as a follow the directions activity, but they are not an art activity, okay? Because it's not about the process of doing it. Those foam kits where you put it all together to make a, a um, you know, like a Christmas ornament or an Easter egg or whatever, those are not creative projects either, but they're good projects for following directions or and we'll talk about this. Sometimes art projects are meant to be gifts or something to show to parents or, you know, right? And that's a good one as a gift for parents, but it's not a creative project. Holiday or gift craft, craft projects, like I said. When you are promoting uniformity and following directions, that's project oriented. And anything that is kind of a craft, right? It, it's specific pieces that you do specific things with that's not process oriented and it's not as creative. Now, some kids find a way to make those things creative, right? Helping children express creativity. This is important. We want to help children learn how to be creative and to not be afraid to express it, right? Um, we help children accept change. We help children realize that some problems don't have easy answers. We have to think outside the box to figure that out help children realize that many problems have a number of possible answers. These are important things to learn. And it's important to learn this at this age in early childhood because these are skills that you're gonna need going forward. Help children learn to judge and accept their own personal feelings, right? Because if you are putting yourself out there in an art project, um, you know your feelings can get hurt if somebody doesn't like it. Reward creativity help children be creative by talking about how important it is to think differently than everybody else, to, to do our th things our own way, right? Not to just copy what everyone else is doing. Help them feel joy in their creative work. A lot of the creative work that we do is around music and art. And those are things that just automatically tend to make, you know, more joy in the classroom. Help children appreciate themselves for being, for being different. So when somebody does something totally off the wall, reward that. Talk about how it was really cool that you thought about a completely different way to do that. And then encourage perseverance. This is one that's sometimes hard for kids. If they can't come up with an idea right away, they're you know on to something else. And that's why sometimes kids don't like to do art because you have to sit and think and you have to do things um, with a little perseverance and stick to -itiveness. So what are the benefits for teachers in helping children with um, creativity? Being able to provide more for more and greater variety in the program, like you can do more stuff if kids are willing to be more creative. Learning to recognize children for their own unique skills. When you let children be creative, and you encourage that, you see skills that you might not have if you hadn't sort of let them go. Um, being able to develop closer relationships with children, having fewer behavior problems, because you can see who they are, like their creativity is showing you who they are inside and you have a better way of working with them when you know that. And then using a minimum of standardized curricula and external evaluation. So you are bound by your program on how much standardized curricula and external evaluation you're using. But when you do creative projects, it tends not to be so much focused on that stuff. Early childhood teachers must provide an adequate base of skills and knowledge for children while at the same time providing an environment that encourages creative thinking in the use of knowledge, the knowledge and skills. For example, basically this is saying you're going to do developmentally appropriate things. You're not going to give three-year-olds projects where they're using hangers, knives, and rakes, right? 
because they don't know how to use that stuff. So they're not gonna be able to come up with creative uses. So you need to think about what are things that three-year-olds understand that then we can think about creatively. Also, it would be dangerous, right? <laughs> so how can you modify your curriculum to encourage creativity? You wanna ensure that curriculum is developmentally appropriate. You wanna ensure that all the things in your classroom that you're doing are appropriate for the age and development of typical children, the development of every child in your classroom and the cultural appropriateness. Um, when we talk about creativity here and modifying curriculum, we're not just talking about art and music projects. We're talking about incorporating creativity into all areas of your classroom, all areas of work that you're doing with children. Um, so choosing materials and activities that are meaningful to children, providing mean materials that encourage creative exploration and provide time and space to explore. That's an important thing. You need to give kids time to understand what you've given them and, you know, time to explore and think about. Encourage divergent thinking and creativity. Let them ask questions, try out different solutions. There's a lot of creativity in your science area, right? So that's a good questioning place. And your sand and water table, there can be a lot of creativity there. Blocks is another area where you don't think about it being creative, but it really is. So providing opportunities for children to interact with children and adults in an atmosphere of acceptance. So you wanna ask yourself, do I take time to observe children in action before stepping in to teach? Do I let kids do what they wanna do before I step in and start telling them what I think they should be doing? You should keep this to a minimum, right? When there are appropriate times for you to step in, for sure do it, but you wanna let kids explore. That's really your job is to set up your environment and let kids explore. So don't step in and start telling them what to do all the time. Do I provide opportunities for children to, to use new understandings and skills in many different situations before moving to the next level? Again, putting stuff out there, letting kids mess around with it, see what, what they can do with it, what works, and then talking about, okay, now I know that you know how to use a paintbrush, let's move on to the next level. Do I provide open-ended activities for children each day? This would be, are you allowing for um, sufficient amounts of free play time? Are you putting out things in your art area and then just letting kids go crazy? Are you putting out things in your science area and just letting kids explore? Do I add or modify the materials in learning centers or stations as I perceive children are ready for change? Um, this is just a general note. A lot of times when you see kids aren't playing in a center anymore, it's because they're bored with the stuff that's there. So you need to change it up. Or also a lot of times if you put things in a center and nobody goes there and you're like, wait, I put some new stuff in there. It may be because they don't know how to use it. And so you need to help them. Do I feel comfortable being challenged? How can I challenge myself to grow as a learner or teacher? One fun thing to do is to sit down and do art projects with the kids and show them how to be creative. Encouraging curiosity in young children. Curiosity is what makes science and math and um, work, right? It's not just about art and music. It's all across the board thinking. Understand individual differences in children's styles of curiosity. Some children may be very curious and get right in there and start doing stuff. Some kids like to watch and figure out without jumping in. Some children are more timid. Some are more comfortable with novelty and, and physical exploration, like I just said. Some children are allowed a lot of creativity, <coughs> excuse me, and curiosity in their homes and some are not. So they're not used to being curious and engaged at school. You need to help them. Understand that even a timid child will be very curious but may require more encouragement and support to feel comfortable in unfamiliar situations. I think that goes for all people. Understand that mess and failure are important parts of curiosity city and how we learn. You jumping in and cleaning things up all the time is not helpful. 
There's plenty of time at the end of the day to clean everything up. I know you don't want to see a mess. I know you don't want kids to get messy, but it's important. Being messy, having things not work, these are important jobs and work that kids do at school with you. Um, parents at home don't have as much time for kids to get messy and for them to fail at doing things. So it's important that we give them opportunities at school. Failure is learning. So when kids are doing something that you know, you look at it and go, that is not gonna work. It's not gonna work. It's not your job to jump in. If what they're doing is going to hurt someone <laughs> or endanger or break something, then you can step in and explain to them, I had to step in here because I could see that this was going to happen and it might've hurt you or it might've broken something. But otherwise your job is to step back and let them learn by doing. Use your attention and approval to reinforce the exploring curious child. I can see what you're doing and it's really interesting to me. I, I can't wait to see what happens when you try to fill up that hat with water or whatever. Teach specifically and intentionally about when and what kinds of exploration are appropriate in the classroom. Like I said, there are things that are appropriate and that you, know, you should let go. And then there are things that are potentially dangerous or potentially inappropriate. And you need to say, this is something that we can do and this is something that we can't do and why. Integrated curriculum and creativity, series of learning activities planned around the topic or theme, for example, apples. So how can you make apples creative and have learning opportunities? You can count them, you can sort them by color, you can taste test them, you can paint with them, you can you do an apple toss, you can make applesauce, you can read books about apples, you can do a field trip to the apple orchard. These are creative ways to think about apples. You need to make sure that the curriculum and instruction fit each child. They have choices about what to learn and how, and that your curriculum connects with their experiences and interests. So some ways that early childhood curriculum um, and learning styles work. Your left brain is your handwriting, symbols, language, reading, phonics, details. That's your analytic, logical, processing, step-by-step -step side. Your right brain is your drawing shapes, colors, singing, music, unpredictability. This is, thinks about things more as a large thing. You're processing um, simultaneously. Oh, you know, you're looking at colors and shapes and seeing it all together, as opposed to your left brain where you're, you're thinking in steps. Right brain is much more general concept. How do you show children that you value their curiosity, positive acceptance, all right? Children are gonna do things a whole bunch of different ways. You are going to practice positive acceptance. You're showing children that there's value in their curiosity and exploration. You're letting children go at their own pace, especially when they're doing something that excites and interests them. So if somebody is in a groove working on a painting, let them go you know, as long as you can. Let the children stay with it until they feel it's finished. So those kids that are at the easel and it looked great, they had painted a beautiful picture that was three different colors and the colors were all separated. So they were bright and it looked so cool. And then they just kept going because that's what they want to do. It's not for you to say your painting is finished. It's for them to say it. Let them figure out their own way of doing things. If they want to use Q-tips to put the paint on, if they find something in the classroom, you know, if they go over to the blocks area and they start dipping their block in paint, you might want to say, hey, that is a really cool idea. I've never seen anybody do that before. You go ahead and do that. But when you're done, we're going to need to wash that paint off the block, okay? Keep the atmosphere relaxed, right? Don't be jumping up to, to wipe off things as they make messes. Wait until it's all over. And then, you know what? This is a good way to teach them how to clean it up together. Encourage guessing, especially when the answers make good sense. What do you think is going to happen when you mix those red and blue colors together? 
practice praise the effort and creativity, not the good job. We've talked about good job before. If you've ever had me for a class, good job is not descriptive praise. Descriptive praise is saying, I really liked the way you used that paintbrush upside down to get the paint on the paper. Or I really like the way you stuck with that black tower until you built it so tall. Good job. You don't, you're not telling them what is the good job. It's just a placeholder and it's just a, um, you know, it's, it's praise without any meaning. Creative questions, open-ended questions. These are some ways of helping children think creatively, making things better with your imagination. What would it, what would taste better if it were sweeter? What would be better if it was quieter? Um, using other senses, close your eyes and guess what's in your hands or what you hear. Divergent thinking questions. How does water help us? What floats in water? What would happen if questions? What if everybody looked alike? What if you could fly? In how many different ways questions? In how many different ways can you use a spoon? In what new ways could we use this? These are all ways to challenge children's thinking. So motivating skills for teachers. These are things that you need to think about when you are helping children do an activity, do a project, um, and also when you are starting to plan something. You wanna help children get started by attending to their physical needs. Do you have everything where it needs to be, right? Are you um, accommodating whatever they need? Are your chairs the right height? Can everybody sit comfortably? Are your tables in the right places? That kind of thing. Is your room warm enough? Finding out their interests. What are you interested in? Do you want to do something about dinosaurs? Do you want to do something about boats? Do you want to do something about princesses? Allowing children to work with friends. This is great. This is great for language development, social emotional development, right? Sharing, talking, planning activities for fun. We'll talk about that in just a second. Permitting children to set and reach goals. When you let children set and reach goals, they feel so much more ownership and like they've really accomplished something. Varying the content and style of activities. Do things differently, do things in different places. Challenging the children and then reinforcing the children. When you are working on an activity plan, which you'll do a lot for this class, ask yourself these questions. Is the activity exciting? Would you be excited to do this? Is the activity in a free setting? Are there too many rules? Are there too many structures involved? Can I take any of that away? Does it spark imagination? Is there a place for kids to think their own way through this? Does it feel like a game? Games are a great way for children to learn and they're fun. Are judgments avoided? Are we grading this? Are we making, um, is, is it standardized or is this something where everybody gets to do whatever they want? Is it competitive? Sometimes it's fun to be competitive. And will there be laughing? If you ask yourself that every time you make an activity plan, will there be laughing? It will help you. So that's a little bit about creativity.